Well, hi everybody, it's your old pal Greg. Uh, a few years ago, I made some videos for YouTube where I tried to explain a few things about aspect ratios and how they've evolved in theatrical motion picture production and in television production. Uh, I didn't really follow up on those videos because you know, I just got busy with other things. Uh, I have received some nice feedback over the years about those, some people that appreciated the way I explained things. So I thought maybe I would do a follow-up finally now and uh, you know, I'll tell you just a little bit more. I'm using the Rode NT1A microphone for this one um, just because I know a lot of people are curious about this microphone and um, I'll just give you a chance to... I'm kind of, kind of killing two birds with one stone. I'll tell you my story, but if you want to listen to the quality of this microphone and how quiet it is when there's nothing going on in the room. There's a washing machine running over there. You might be able to hear that. You might hear some clocks ticking, but this is the Rode NT1A microphone plugged directly into the camera. All right, now back to uh, aspect ratios and a sort of follow-up. I'm gonna start with talking some about pixels and how those are important in today's digital video production world and also in motion pictures that you see at movie theaters. So um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you a, some background. I'm gonna take it way back to the 1880s. There was a, a, an artistic style used by painters in the 1880s uh, called pointillization. And perhaps the most uh, well-known of the artists who used this technique was uh, uh, George Surratt. Um, I may not be pronouncing his name as well as I could if I had a better command of French, so pardon my French. But uh, Surratt's most famous piece is arguably uh, this one here, which uh, when I was a kid I saw this at the Art Institute of Chicago, a, a, a you know school field trip, and we got to see this. When you see it in its full context like this, Okay, it's, it's, uh, it's a style, it's a painting, uh, it makes sense. It's people lounging at the park. If you get really close to the uh, painting and look at it, you know, real close up, you're going to see that it's really comprised of a whole bunch of little colored dots. And, um, you know, I don't think that the painters at the time that this uh, movement was going on realized that they were experimenting with what would become the foundations of digital video and computer graphics that's so important to the 21st century. But you get the idea. A whole bunch of little dots, when viewed from a distance, form an image that, uh, that is not just uh, you know, little dots. It, 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 it makes more sense viewed from the correct viewing distance. Okay, so keep that in mind. This is kind of what pixels do. Uh, in the history of television as we know it, a uh, young farm boy from Idaho uh, called, uh, what was his name, Philo T. Farnsworth. Uh, as he was out plowing the fields, he envisioned some sort of electronic uh, motion picture broadcasting medium where, like the way he was plowing his fields, one row at a time until you get the entire field plowed, he thought about well, what if you could produce an image one line at a time until you have an entire image. Uh, so that's kind of the concept be behind television, where you'd have lines that together form an image, kind of like the pixel idea. So for years we had the NTSC standard here in North America, which included a color specification, so you could have color TV, and um, that's what we were watching. Back when I was in college in the 1980s, oof, so <laughs> from the 1880s to the 1980s, uh, television was just, it was what it was. We didn't call it standard definition television. It was just television. Nobody really knew much about high definition. It was sort of a conceptual thing that a few people had seen at trade show demonstrations, but, you know, we weren't really sure what that was all about. What we knew about television in the 1980s, the standard NTSC was, it had 525 lines of resolution scanning from top to bottom. 
Now, not all of those 525 lines were used for picture information. Some at the extreme top and the extreme bottom were used for more um, kind of electronic instructions to the receiver unit to keep the picture synced and to keep you know, a lot of nitty gritty stuff that you, you really don't have to worry about too much. Uh, closed captioning, for example, was, was embedded in one of those lines that you couldn't see because it was outside of the picture information. Now, as we got into uh, digital television, um, well, you, you could kind of get rid of those lines that weren't used anymore and, and basically, you know, simplify it down to 480 lines of resolution to create your uh, television screen. And if you're talking about uh, pixels now, uh, little dots making up those, those lines, then the resolution across uh, horizontally needed to be uh, 640 pixels. So 640 pixels by 480 pixels gives you an aspect ratio of um, 4 by 3, and that's standard definition television. And each one of those little pixels, if you zoom in, would look like one of these little points from pointillism. Um, so that's the standard for standard definition video. Now, as you get into high definition video, you start to see other standards. Uh, like 720 would be uh, the, the, the number of lines in a picture. So 720, and since it's a 16 by, uh, rather 16 by 9 image, then uh, the number of pixels needed across would be 1280. So 1280 by 720 is a 16 by 9 high definition format. But then there's also uh, the, the 1080 lines of resolution, 1080. So to get a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, you would have 1920 by 1080 gives you, you know, that full high definition standard. Now, if you're shopping for TVs, you've probably seen the specifications when they say, well, this monitor here has a 720p. Uh, resolution and this other monitor over here has a 1080 resolution so what that means is well they're both high definition usually if it's a 720 monitor hear the fridge with this great microphone okay if it's a 720 monitor it's probably one of the smaller ones um, maybe a few years ago you could have gotten a, a 42 inch or larger monitor that was only a 720 resolution but, uh, but these days, it's pretty much the standard. If you're anywhere above 32 inches on your diagonal measurement of your screen, then you're going to probably have a 1080 screen. Um, oddly enough, here, let me show you this uh, popular little camera that people like to use, the GoPro camera. You know, these little cameras you can mount to your helmet when you go skydiving or skiing or whatever. This little camera is a fun little camera that can actually shoot in both the 1080 resolution or in a 720 resolution for high definition video. Um, when it's in the 720 resolution mode, it has some, some slow motion features, which are kind of fun. Uh, it can shoot at um, twice normal speed, which means you can play it back at normal speed and you get half speed slow motion. This thing will even shoot at standard definition widescreen. So it would be a 480 pixel height, but with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And when you do that, you can actually shoot at four times normal speed for your frame rate and then, um, you know, get slow motion in standard definition. So that, that, that's just, you know, a side note here. Uh, when I talk about frame rates, okay, that's another thing that when, uh, back when I was in college, uh, the frame rate for video was 30 frames per second on NTSC. It's actually 29.97 frames per second. There's some technical issues on why that is, but let's just say it's 30 frames per second. But maybe not, uh, well, 30 full frames, it's a, it's a technicality there. You see, what happens with uh, NTSC video is it has an interlaced picture. 
Now, when I say interlaced, um, this is as opposed to what's called progressive scan. And when you're out there sh shopping for, for TVs or you're, you're looking at the specifications on your camera, it may say that it sh uh, shoots 1080i or your monitor displays at 1080i or 720p. The I meaning interlaced and the P meaning progressive scan. Now, uh, what this means, and other people have explained this on uh, YouTube videos, but I'll try and um, explain it as well. Uh, the uh, original idea for um, the, the television broadcast standard was this interlaced picture where, you know, you've got these scan lines going across the screen. Let's say that instead of doing an entire 525 lines or 480 lines at once, they do half of those. Let's just say... Uh, if you numbered all those lines, uh, start with the odd numbered lines and then do the even numbered lines, the odd numbered lines, even number, and you just keep interlacing those pictures. Uh, two sets of these lines create an entire frame, uh, but one set of lines, just the odd numbered lines or just the even numbered lines would be called a field. So uh, television, in, instead of uh, being described as 30 frames per second, would maybe be more accurately described as 60 fields per second. Now, the interlacing uh, allowed for a higher resolution picture um, with limited resources, basically. I, you know, and, and there's probably a much more accurate way to describe it, but I'll just say that by interlacing the picture, you could get a better quality uh, without using as much resources as you would need electronically to produce a progressive scan picture. But, you know, now we're in the 21st century, our electronics can handle it. We can do progressive scan pictures. However, um, the interlaced uh, picture is, uh, is still out there. Um, and, and, you know, it just kind of depends. A lot of people prefer the look of progressive scan because it looks more like a movie. Uh, that you would see at the movie theater. Because back when they were using film in movie theaters, uh, you had this, this physical film that would run through the projector. It would move, it would stop, shutter would open, it would project that frame, the entire frame, close, move the film, open again, show the next frame, the entire frame. So you get this flicker because the shutter is closing and opening, but with each opening you get a whole new frame the entire frame, none of this line stuff, because it was film, it wasn't electronic. So uh, they use the same, same concept for progressive scan camera work on electronic mediums, and that gives you more of the film look. It also gives you a little bit more of a flicker. So if uh, I have this movement like this, well, if it's a progressive scan picture, and that's a really fast movement, you might see sort of a series of da 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 da, -da like that, okay? Um, but if it's interlaced, it would look more smooth, but if you were to freeze the frame, you would get what was called maybe combing. Um, it's just a style thing. I've heard people online really, really rail against interlaced, and I think that's unnecessary. Um, we've just sort of been conditioned to see motion pictures in a theater, look more flickery, fewer frames per second, and what we watch on TV looks more fluid, generally speaking. Um, if you're watching a sports broadcast, lots of action, people prefer maybe progressive scan because you don't get that combing effect. Um, that's one of the reasons why uh, ESPN and ABC, which are kind of, you know, co-owned by Disney, uh, and also um, Fox that does a lot of... Um, you know, sports on TV, those stations are actually using a 720p broadcast standard nationwide, whereas CBS and NBC are using 1080i as their standard. You, most people would have to be looking very closely at the picture and thinking about it to really tell the difference, but uh, nevertheless, it's out there and maybe you can tell the difference and well, good for you. I hope it doesn't bug you. Now, just to give you a little sample, I'll, I'll shoot some things with this little GoPro camera and you can see how it might, uh, how, how the footage might, might look. Um, I'll start with this frame here, which is going to be a 1920 by 1080 frame. So the, the, you know, the full resolution of high definition. 
And so you can see what, what footage would look like if it were shot that way at uh, 1920 by 1080. Now, if I were to shoot something at 1280 by 720, which is still considered high definition, um, the same basic action might look something like this. Um, but your, your TV is going is, is to go ahead and blow that up to the same picture size as if you were watching something at 1080. And so if I blow that up, you know, maybe you really can't tell the difference that one was shot at a lower resolution than the other. But that just gives you a, a little bit of a, an idea of how the larger 1080 image would look compared to if you were to over, overlay a 720 image uh, within that frame, it would look something like this. Whereas uh, if you had something that was a widescreen standard definition at a 480 um, you know, resolution of the, you know, the, the, line, the horizontal lines there, um, then, then that 480 image would look something like this when you were watching it, uh, you know, by comparison. And again, your monitor is going to blow this up to, to maybe fill up the whole screen. If you were shooting something uh, in standard definition at a 4 by 3 aspect ratio, then of course it would look more like a square picture compared to the wider high definition frame. So, just some basic examples of, of how those things are, are different uh, from, a, from a pixel resolution standpoint.